Okay, so I wanted to make this quick little video on the dynamic notch for the Helio. And so we have that special hex up here under my uh, drive account. And pardon the uh, browsing. But under Helio dynamic notch hex, you have it right here. You can flash that and it's three point, beta flight 3.5.1. And the dynamic notch um, seems to work. I need to do more testing but the results weren't great. So let me uh, open up some stuff here. Hold on a second. Okay, so on this side of the screen, I have the Helio at 8K running. So it's 8K and I'm, it appears to me even when the Helio is running and you set your gyro in Betaflight to be 8K, like you set it to 8K mode in Betaflight and uh, you select 8K for a gyro sampling rate. I think that the Helio is still sampling at 32K. I can't confirm that because you got to remember it's a different processor that's commanding the gyro chip. The gyro chip goes to their F3, they do their thing, then they pass data to the F4 chip, which is Betaflight. So just setting things in Betaflight, yeah, it could tell the F3, you know, it could work that the F4 chip tells the F3 chip, hey, make sure it's 8K mode, and then the F3 chip tells the gyro, hey, make sure it's. 8K mode, but that maybe they don't, and I, I don't think they do because when I look at, this is 8K mode on the Helio, and let me go down to here, this is 16K mode on the Helio, so let me open up that one, and when I look at the difference between these two graphs, <coughs> they kind of look the same, this one's, the props are a little more, more worn on this one, so these are, uh, you know, not apples to apples, but I'm actually getting, I would say that's why you're getting more noise here, but to me this should have dropped, like you shouldn't get this much yellow in 8K as you do in 16K, there's a lot more noise. So I don't think they're actually um, telling the gyro to pass 8K mode data. Now, um, looking at the CL Racing F7 board, which I have on the same rig, I have a dual flight controller rig, one just for testing this kind of stuff. You can see with that one, when that this is 16k on that same same flight. So this flight and this are the same flight. It's just two different flight controllers reading data. You can see now this is six, you know, 16k. This is 8k. So you can see it. We're we're getting that drop as we'd expect in the amount of noise here. Um, so that that's uh, no more a normal expectation there, a nor, normal thing that we be looking for. Okay, so then going now the next step, this is the Helio in 8K mode with the dynamic notch enabled. And you can see here, yeah, it, it's it's definitely working. It's reducing the noise. I'm not satisfied though. I need to run, so what sucks here a little bit, I think I can run the with the dynamic notch turned on, I think I can run the um, debug mode of uh, uh, FFT underscore frequency and then see what the dynamic notch is doing. I didn't have that turned on here yet. And I'm waiting for a new transmitter and some receivers. I have a ton of fail safe issues in the winter with my spectrum and I, I can't take it anymore. So I'm done flying. It's like every time I go outside, it's basically like, oh, let's see what unique freaking way I can crash my spectrum today with that when it's cold. In the summer it's fine, but in the winter it's it's just ridiculous. I don't I don't understand it and I'm done with it. So I'm waiting for that so before I get that other data. But you can see it does make a difference, right? This is just before AK mode helio, AK mode helio, this is with the dynamic notch without it. Uh, so if you want to run those tests that would be great. Uh, it honestly I'm I don't know, I would expect a better result. So that's that one. Now this is the CL Racing F7, and this is more the result I would expect. Notice how here in 8K mode without the dynamic notch, you can see all this noise, the motor band. But with the dynamic notch on the CL Racing F7, again, this is this flight. These are the same flight. This is just the Helio board and the CL Racing F7 board. And then this is this flight as well. So you, in this one, you can see how that dynamic notch is killing that motor peak 
uh, you're not getting that bright yellow anymore. And that's what I would have expected on the Helio. So what that's telling me is that it's not, the dynamic knots is not tracking really well. And I have to figure out a better way to get it to track well. Um, I have an idea, but I kind of don't think it's going to work. The dynamic notch in that hex, you can set it to be for static filters or after static filters, but honestly, the static filters on the gyro on this the Helio board, the Betaflight static filters, are turned off. So it, that setting shouldn't matter, and that's the only one I would I'd try. So I would try it and see if I can make it any better, but if not, I, again, it is better than no dynamic notch at all, so it's an improvement, but it's 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 not performing as well as it would on any other flight control board. Um, and I think that's just because it, it can't lock on to the peak as, as it normally does because of, I guess, they're filtering up front or something. I don't know. So that's the results I have. Uh, you know, check it out. If you do, uh, download that hex and get it installed on your Helio. And if you can run some FFT underscore frequency debug mode tests and send and upload those logs, that would be awesome. The problem I have is this hex has been out for a long time. And we give it to people. Honestly, some people reached out saying they have P-term oscillations and need some help on their helio, and there's any, you know, anything I could do to help them, and I, I feel bad. So I asked Ken if he could get the dynamic notch working. He did, and uh, I said, hey, can you? here it is. Can you give me some logs? I'd love to see it, because I didn't have the helio board uh, that Quadex uh, gave me to for testing, because I wasn't going to buy one. And uh, so, But nobody ever sends me logs back. <laughs> They take the stuff, but they don't, and that's fine. Not everybody's into the logging. So if you do, that would be great. If not, I'll get there eventually on it. Okay, well, I hope this helps. Again, that uh, if you go to tiny.cc forward slash filter calc and you go into this Helio Dynamic Notch Hex folder, here's all the test data so you can see it for yourself. The logs and everything are there, and then the plasma trees, and then here's the hex file you could, you could flash. Thanks.